what I realized over time listening to so many podcasts every week is that I was learning so much about the world and just being exposed to new stories, new people, and like also just new vocabulary. And that was translating to my life. And I was more aware of pop culture. I was more aware of news. I was more aware of everything going on. And I think podcast listening has absolutely made me a smarter person. People are hungry for stories. It's part of our very being. Storytelling is a form of history. It goes from one generation to another. The great Studs Terkel said those words. An award-winning journalist and author known for holding space for the everyday person and the stories they had to share. He mastered the art of listening. And I try to imagine what it would be like if he was with us today. What a gift it would be if he lived during the age of podcasting. I like to think I have a responsibility to Studs since he influenced me so much as a journalist. It's made me a better listener, which has helped me become a better coach, better practitioner, better friend, and yeah, better podcaster. And while people are hungry for stories, like he says, each and every one of us has a story of our own. And for me, Hilary Russo, host of this show, Holistically Speaking, it took me a while to come around to podcasting. And this coming from a gal who's been in broadcast media for 25 years. But something happens when we just let go and realize we have a responsibility to feed that hunger that Studs mentioned. Like Arielle Nissenblatt, who you're going to get to know during this hour. So Arielle is not only the community manager of Squadcast, which is the remote podcast recording platform that brings you this show and many others on the podcast space week after week. She's also a podcast junkie who truly knows her stuff. But guess what? There was a time when she resisted this medium too. So how did the shy kid who sucked at math find a love of podcasting? I guess you can say she got the studs bug. A love for the art of listening. She's what I would call the active listener. Someone who really tunes in and connects with what's being said and the sounds that are being shared. And from that, she's become quite an expert on the auditory and podcast life. And trust me, when Arielle talks, I listen, and I think you will too. Because during our conversation, she not only shares her story, but answers your questions about what it takes to level up as a podcaster. From marketing, to monetizing, connecting, to collaborating, she covers it all. Because when it all boils down to it, podcasting is storytelling. And whether you have a podcast or not, turning your ideas and experiences into stories that matter to people is what connects all of us on a deeper level. So on that note, take a listen. Arielle Nissenblatt. I am so excited to have you on Holistically Speaking. I have had some great conversations with you in the past about podcasting, about life in general, and just having you on the show and being able to share you with Holistically Speaking listeners. I'm so jazzed about this. (laughs) Very excited to be here. Typically, the folks that I have on the show are sharing some kind of trauma to triumph, or maybe they just have some great advice. And originally, I wasn't really sure what I could have Ariel come on and really talk about that might be your own story. But I know that one thing I hear, especially in the podcasting world, especially as we're seeing more podcasts being released, is that people finally have a voice or people are finally being heard. And that's kind of something that you and I uh, had just talked about, about why you got into this field, why audio is kind of your jam. And I'd love for you to share that with listeners. Absolutely. I started in the podcast space in 2017. And when I started, it was because I was just listening to a ton of podcasts and I wanted to listen to more podcasts and I wanted to find a way to do that. And especially to find podcasts that were outside of my own comfort zone, topics of interest. I really wanted to be exposed to lots of different stories from lots of different places, from lots of different people. And so I started a podcast recommendation newsletter that I still run to this day and when I started it, people would say to me, oh, you know, you, you listen to so many podcasts. Do you want to start a podcast? And I would say, no, there's already too many voices out there. There's already, you know, you, I don't need to have my voice out there. And then over time, 
I realized that it's fun to have a podcast and maybe I could offer something different. Maybe I could offer a different voice that would inspire other people in some way. Um, I don't have grand visions, but, you know, so I eventually started a podcast recommendation podcast that I still run. And I have also had another podcast, sort of a comedy infotainment podcast with my friend Shira. And um, I've really, you know, just tried a whole bunch of things. And I did it because, not because I was shy as a kid, but I was shy as a kid. And I definitely think that I've 180'd from that. And I think podcasting has definitely helped. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think about like you are the voice. Like those of us that are in the podcasting field, we know about Squadcast. And Squadcast is this amazing recording platform that we're actually using right now. I've been using Squadcast for a long time. You're the community manager for Squadcast. You've been with uh, Squadcast for what? How Since they started? No, no, no. No? I started in 2020. Okay. And Squadcast officially started in 2016 but I have known about Squadcast since 2018 yeah. and um, have been friendly with the founders since then so I definitely am a big long time I was a fan of Squadcast I was a user of Squadcast before I started working there which I think is an awesome way to find a job yes you kind of <laughs> like it's a falling into right and being someone yeah. that loves audio loves being in this field and you are definitely a wealth of information. I mean, every time there's like a Twitter conversation or a Clubhouse conversation or just any kind of conversation that Squadcast is holding space for, it is so informative. And I love checking in on, on these conversations as well. And, uh, you know, with Zach and Rockland and yourself and just the community of people that are sharing their own experiences, we all have a voice, right? And it, it's just, it's so helpful to have that. And just so folks know, Squadcast being the place that I record on, uh, for Holistically Speaking, if you haven't tried podcasting or you're thinking of recording your first podcast, this is a great place to start. Because let me just, I'm throwing out, I'm throwing this out there for you. The community aspect and support of Squadcast is probably the best out of any platform I've ever used. So I just want to start out by sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, we really try. Yeah. So let's talk about the, what you were just sharing. So you you shared with me like you, you didn't feel like you were smart with math. You didn't feel like you were a reader. You took things in in an auditory way and that kind of elevated you and put you to this place where you are now that's in the podcast field, which by the way, going back so many years, podcasts were kind of that thing that people thought it was just an alternative to radio, but it's so much more. So how did you find podcasting when it's not something that's been around for so many decades? Like, how did it yeah. come to your place? Well, like you were saying, when I was a kid, I definitely, I didn't think I was a smart kid. I I thought I was average, maybe even below average. I mean, technically I was below average at math. And as I've grown up, I've learned a lot about delegation and how maybe I'm never going to be good at math. Maybe I'm never going to be spectacular at math, but there are people who are spectacular at math and I can employ them. And that's lovely. So that's something that I've learned along the way. Um, <laughs> I but I also discovered that I am an auditory learner and that was not something that I knew to explore when I was younger, when I was in high school, even when I was in college, I, I didn't listen to podcasts. I found podcasts when I was living in Jackson, Mississippi. My first job after college was at a Jewish nonprofit in Jackson. And it was with a cohort of seven other people around my age. And um, we would travel to different synagogues throughout the South. And we spent a lot of time in the car. And so everybody was into podcasts. And I was resistant at first. And then Serial came out and everybody was listening to Serial and coming to the office and discussing Serial and, oh, the new episode just dropped. I can't, here are my theories. And I was still resistant. And I didn't want to listen because I was like, everybody's listening. I don't want to listen if everybody's listening. But that is a dumb attitude that I have since regretted and admitted. And uh, what is it? I The egg was on my face or whatever the phrase is. Um, I made a mistake. I then listened to Serial and was like, wow, this is unbelievable, not only as a story, but also I love taking it in through my ears. And what a lovely, unique experience that I had not experienced before. And from there, I listened to more and more podcasts, but this was 2014, 15, and I wasn't thinking about them critically in any way. And I was listening to NPR and NPR adjacent podcasts, um, you know, Radio Lab, um, S Town, all of the all of the classic ones that if you Google like best podcasts, they're gonna be on all the lists. 
And then I moved to Los Angeles and I was stuck in traffic all the time and I wanted to listen to more podcasts. So that's when I started the newsletter that I mentioned a few moments ago. And the way the newsletter works is that each week is curated by a different person. The idea being that if other people bring their favorite podcast recommendations to me, then I will find new podcasts to listen to and so will everybody else. And so what I realized over time listening to so many podcasts every week is that I was learning so much about the world and just being exposed to new stories, new people, and like also just new vocabulary. And that was translating to my life. And I was more aware of pop culture. I was more aware of news. I was more aware of everything going on. And I think podcast listening has absolutely made me a smarter person. So that's pretty cool to discover when you're in your 20s. That's a strong statement. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And, and, you know, when you think about it, going back to the early part of the years when you first discovered podcasting, where we are now, I think in a recent conversation that you had on Twitter, uh, I think it was during the Squadcast scavenger hunt that we did in December, which was so much fun. There's so many fun <laughs> things you could do with Squadcast or just with podcasting in general, that there's now over 3 million podcasts out there. Yeah, and there's and a lot. It, a lot, a lot of listening to do, a lot of stories to be told, a lot of just, I mean, everyone has a story. I say that all the time. Coming from the media background, I say that all the time. It's that we all have a story to share, whether you decide to share it publicly or just with somebody more intimately. Uh, and honestly, the podcast space is quite intimate. If you think about it, There, there's always somebody who that you can touch, move, and inspire by the story that you're sharing, you know, and whatever it is, comedy, mental health, whatever. So, um, I, I'm curious about, you, you mentioned the Earbuds Podcasting Collective and how you say that it's curated by a different person. What do you mean by that? So there's a form on the website, earbudspodcastcollective.org, and anybody who wants to curate a list can curate a list. I encourage anybody who wants to to do so. And what that means is that they fill out this form, they find five podcast episodes on a theme, And it could be any theme. It could be maybe you are a biology professor and you really love mitochondria and you're going to go and find five podcast episodes about mitochondria. I don't know where that came from, by the way, in my head. (laughs) I love that you you went there. And um, usually that's coffee. Usually Usually it's coffee or beluga whales. Those are usually the things that I uh, like fall back on when I'm giving examples. But for some reason, mitochondria came today. And um, yeah, so... Yes, you can be a professional, you can be a professor, you can be maybe a fitness instructor who wants to go out and find five podcast episodes on fitness. But you also could just be a person who wants to challenge themselves to learn about a new thing and then you bring us a list on that new thing that you've discovered podcasts on. So really you can be anybody. Um, And the marketing element of it is that if you have a podcast, you can include one of your own podcasts as part of it. And so that inspires people who have a launch coming up to curate a list. Um, The one caveat is that the list is really long at this point. I have it booked out until July of this coming year. Um, So when I have people sign up to curate a list, I just say, um, you know, just so you know, here's the situation. If you have a launch coming up, I can try to squeeze you in earlier. But um, for the most part, it's a wait. It's a waiting game. But still, it's a really great opportunity. So you should get signed up now. So yeah, the idea behind that is, you know, curate a list, bring me five podcast episodes on a theme. And now on my website, since 2017, I put out a list every single Sunday night. So there are 50, 100, 150, 200, like almost 250 lists of podcast recommendations with five podcasts each, plus more because I do a spotlight feature and then I feature cl- more podcasts in the classified section. There's just a lot to choose from going back to what you said about there being so mm-hmm. many millions of podcasts out there. A lot of those podcasts um, were limited series or they were started by somebody who put out one or two episodes and then stopped producing that podcast. But there's still so much quality content to discover. And that's why I'm a big fan of curation because you can't possibly listen to all the millions of episodes that are out there. But if you have trusted people that you rely on for podcast recommendations, your ears are going to be filled with great podcast recommendations for years to come. That is such a commitment. I'm just listening to you <laughs> and I'm like doing it every week for so many years. And and then, I mean, how many of those podcasts that are recommended to you in the in in that format do you actually tune into? So I used to listen to all of them. Uh, <laughs> when I first started in 2017, the idea was people would submit a list. I would listen to it beforehand 
to vet the podcasts to make sure that nothing shitty was being said. Can I curse? I can redo that if you don't like cursing. There, there, there could be an E rating. <laughs> don't worry. In fact, I might even leave that in. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when I started, I would listen to everything and every single day. So it, five episodes a week. So in theory, one episode for every day of the work week. I would then write a post about each of those episodes and it would go on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And after a while it became very cumbersome to do every single day. When I started in 2017, I was living in LA and I was stringing together like six part-time jobs. Um, none really in podcasting, sort of in the Jewish education world, which I got out of, which I'm glad to have gotten out of. Also in, I was working for a geography professor because I studied geography in undergrad and that was fun, but it was also part-time. So I was doing all these things and I actually was able to listen to podcasts, write up a paragraph about each one of them and post it to the earbuds social channels. Over time, that became much harder. So now what I do is I do a quick listen to make sure that the podcasts are not racist, sexist, homophobic, all of the bad words. Um, and then I will, I'll let it, I'll let it slide. I have made a few mistakes along the way. Um, but I, I really try to own up to them. And I also recently hired somebody to help me with all of this. So that hopefully will ease the situation a little bit. Maybe she can listen to a few of the shows, mm -hmm. make some recommendations, write some paragraphs up about each one. Because I think people like to hear about why this podcast episode is worth their time. Yeah. And I'm thinking while I'm sitting here listening to you that just writing a newsletter once a week or twice a week on my end for Holistically Speaking and recording podcasts and going through the podcast episodes and sending them to my editor is so time consuming just for me with my yeah. podcast. I can't even imagine what it must be like to be taking on that kind of commitment because I mean, how does how does Ariel take care of yourself? Like, what's self care <laughs> for you? I listen to a lot of podcasts, and honestly, I know that that sounds like more work, but it is really. I love to fill my ears constantly. Uh, I go for really long walks. I live in Manhattan, and I will often plug in a podcast or an audiobook and just walk until I finish it. And I really love history and being in New York, walking around New York, listening to an audiobook about the history of New York is very exciting to me. That feels like self-care. Um, I belong to a gym where there's a sauna. That's self-care to me. <laughs> my, I have a, a standing date with my friend Noah every Wednesday and we get a massage. So that's what's up. <laughs> uh, that sounds awesome, especially the massage part. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you mentioned something that's really interesting, the taking a while. I'm a huge history nerd as well. And when I was living in New York for 10 years, which I'm just outside New York, but every time I go somewhere, you know how they have the little audio you can plug in and plug yeah. in on your phone? Doing the – this this is like a level up, doing it what you're doing. You know, if, you, if you're walking down in, in like, Fidei and near the area where, like, everybody knows about Hamilton or Hamilton Heights, right – yeah. listening to a podcast about Hamilton or listening to a podcast about the background about Alexander Hamilton. Yes. You learn a lot more than just punching in the four numbers and listening on your phone for a minute, right? By some celebrity that's that's recording it. Which, by the <laughs> way, those are awesome. Those are cool, but, yeah. But doing a whole hour where you're just roaming on your own and learning, yeah, that's cool. I might have to try that. I just listened to this book called New York by Edward Rutherford. And it is, a, I want to say, like a 45-hour listen it took me a very long time. It traces this one family from the 1600s in Dutch Manhattan mm. to 2009. And it is incredible. It's historical fiction. And now I'm obsessed with historical fiction. So if you have recommendations, please let me know. I'm reading, uh, now I'm reading The Island at the Center of the World. And it's not historical fiction. I think it's just straight up history um, and nonfiction, but I love it. And yeah, any recommendations about the history of New York? I'm very into it. Slash, I also like to listen to podcasts about places that I am visiting. I like to do podcast tourism. So like if I'm going to Costa Rica, which I am in two months or so, I'm probably going to try to listen to some podcasts about the geography of Costa Rica or people in Costa Rica. So just a really fun way to fully immerse yourself in a place. I love that okay have you been uh, living in new york did you ever go up to the dutch house up in um inwood no but oh. i did recently walk the from tip to tip of manhattan mm -hmm. and i was in inwood but mm -hmm. i did not do that but now i'll have to do that it's it's crazy because it's like this one house that just exists among 
all of the uh, you know apartment buildings and it's from oh. like the 1600s 1700s because obviously very into uh, that <laughs> very me too and then there's also the morris jamal house on the east side yes the, i did which, see that which i think even um lin-manuel miranda wrote a little bit of hamilton inside the house he was inspired by it there's just oh. so much cool stuff in new york i get it yeah. i'm such a nerd so uh where are you going in costa rica what part of costa rica I don't really know my itinerary yet, but I know I'm doing a little bit of the beach, a little bit of the mountains, and I just know that I want to spend time snorkeling. I love mm. being inside water. <laughs> yeah. Costa Rica is one of the blue zones. I had Dan what, what do you, on what my does podcast. That mean? What's that? Oh, okay. You got to listen <laughs> to my blue zone podcast. Um, the blue zones are five areas of the world that are seeing people living well into their 100s. Oh. And, it's, and it's based on um, nine principles, the power nine, that Dan Butner, who is a uh, National Geographic fellow and journalist, award-winning journalist, and also the founder of the Blue Zones, meaning that he found all these, these people obviously existed, right? But Nicoya, Costa Rica is one of those areas, and people are living well into their centenarian years, and they're doing it holistically. So it's like the foods that they're eating, their environment, their faith, the community, being active, these are all part of the Power Nine principles. So when I went to Costa Rica for the first time, I remember being like, oh, pura vida. Why am I even mm. going home? <laughs> so That I have a, heard. Oh, you'll have an amazing time wherever you are. That's amazing. Love it. So you have listened. You listen to a lot of podcasts still, even though you don't have time to do all the write-ups. You're still doing your your uh, collective. You have your own podcast as well. You're, so you're obviously supporting the Squadcast community all the time. And we have a bunch of questions from those who listen to Holistically Speaking, and I would love to throw them out at you and Let's also give it. a shout out. I want to shout out to these fellow podcasters out there and, and let them be heard. This one comes from Tiffany, and she has two podcasts, Mastering the Podcaster Mindset and also Radical Audacity, of which I've been on both. So thank you, Tiffany, for holding space for me. Uh, what is a great way to get noticed by Apple, Spotify, Good Pods, et cetera, to have your podcast in a spotlight category? Great question, Tiffany. Yes, very good question, the question. And thank you for asking because a lot of people create audio, create podcasts, create episodes, series, whatever, and they do not spend any time thinking about marketing. You have to spend time thinking about marketing. One of the best ways for your podcast to reach new audiences is to be featured in apps because I think about this all the time. Social media is great. Social media will let your already existing listeners know that you have a new episode out. Maybe it'll attract a few new listeners here and there. But the likelihood of people who are scrolling on social media to move from scrolling to so social media to listening to a podcast right then and there is pretty low. Think about the user behavior. Think about what you do when you're listening to, when you're scrolling on social media. You're not necessarily in the mindset of then going to listen. You probably want to be scrolling. But if somebody's scrolling on an app, they're ready to listen right then and there. And if your podcast can pop up and be in their field of vision and be a really attractive cover art that they really want to check out and they click on your face and then they listen to 30 seconds and they love you, then you, you probably have a listener for a while. So yes, you want to pop up on all those listening apps, but how do you actually do it? Some of the podcast apps have forms where you can apply to be featured. Apple Podcasts has one of these. Uh, it's an Airtable form. And the thing is, a lot of people know about it, and a lot of people are applying to be on it all the time, and that's great. But there's some tricks, and you know, there's no silver bullet to make sure that you're going to be featured by Apple Podcasts, but you can try, and you can try very often. My biggest piece of advice is to make your headline stand out and be timely. So when you apply on Apple Podcasts on their Airtable form, they ask you for why your podcast should be featured, why it should be featured now, and why you as a host are doing something different. And so you really want to stand out. You want to you want to contribute to their goal, to Apple Podcast's goal of making their homepage, their browse section look like a news feed. So they want to be able to break news. They want to be able to say, "Oh, Tanahasi Coates is um, you know, he has a new book coming out, so he's going to make the rounds." If you get Tanahasi Coates on your podcast, obviously that's huge, but you definitely want to make sure that you are letting Apple know that that is happening. And um, let's go with a different example. Let's go with something a little more attainable. <laughs> Say you have like an amazing mitochondrial biologist on your podcast and, and that mitochondrial biologist is 
just discovered something, you want to make sure that you are highlighting that discovery in your pitch because that discovery is a big, big, big deal. And Apple wants to put that on their homepage. So that goes for Apple, that goes for Stitcher. Stitcher also has an Airtable form that you can fill out to potentially be featured on Stitcher. Um, a lot of the other podcast listening apps don't necessarily have forms that you can fill out to be featured, but they do have very active social media and you can get to know them on social media. Good Pods, for example, is very active and they will often ask for, ask for podcasts to feature. And also you get to know them, you get to know what podcasts they tend to feature. Then you can hit them with a, Hey, I'm, I have this person coming onto my show, or I'm talking about this on my podcast. Would you consider featuring me in exchange for me doing X, Y, and Z? So think about what you have to leverage. Think about the collateral that you have that you can then say, Hey, good pods. Um, in exchange for you featuring my show, I'd love to shout you out on my podcast, or I'd love to say at the end of the show, you can listen to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including on Good Pods. So just think about what you have. Maybe you have a newsletter and you can link to the Good Pods link, anything like that. Anything that you can leverage is something worth it for those people, for those podcast apps. That is such good advice. What a great question that led to an amazing answer and so much value to that. Like it was not just one thing that you shared. From that, I mean, what about if somebody has already released a podcast, maybe in the last month, but it's still like a big name. It's somebody they want to, they would love to share with like Apple or Spotify or Good Pods. Is it okay to go back and say, hey, this has been released. They just released a book. It was last month, but is that, yeah. does that still have value? I think there's always relevance. That's the hard part, especially that a lot of limited series podcasters get kind of hung up on is they had a six episode series go out and now it's it's on the 10th week. It's four weeks after the last episode is launched. How do you continue getting press for it? There are a few ways. Um, you know, think about is the content evergreen? Is it still making headlines? You can rewrite things to make sure that it still has headlines. Um, Especially if that the somebody that you had on your podcast puts out a new book, like you said, or writes a blog post. Hey, if you want to learn more about this person who put out this amazing blog post, I spoke to them in depth. Great. So you can always send those pitches. Another thing to consider is doing behind the scenes content for your podcast. So potentially putting out an episode with your co-producer or your co-host talking about that episode and going more in depth and maybe bringing in clips from that episode that you did with that person who's now making headlines and re-establishing why that interview was so great, just making it more newsworthy by bringing it back to the front of your feed. Yeah, I love the repurposing. I mean, for me, I, I've been doing the audio version of this podcast since we launched in June of 2020. And then when Squadcast uh, started releasing even better audio, uh, video quality, I was like, I can repurpose this video. I don't have to release the entire hour of you and I sitting in our living rooms, right? But I can repurpose those little nuggets of sound bites that don't have right. to just be audio. They can be both. So that's a, that's a great tip. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you, Tiffany, for the question. Bree has a question. Bree has a podcast called Clever Conversations. Oh, that's a new one for me. Uh, how do you create intimacy with your audience? So there was a debate a few years ago. Should you refer to your audience as listeners or listener? How do you do that, first of all, Hillary? Me? I yeah. I love to be one-on-one. -on -one. And, mm -hmm. and as a media professor and a media coach and being in that field, it, it goes back and forth. But I tend to believe in the audience of one when I'm talking specifically about a thing. But sometimes I will make it a collaborative. It just depends yeah. on, the, on the conversation. So that's just a question to ponder. I'm a big fan of asking the audience what they want from you. I think a lot of people tend to ask general questions when really what they should be doing is surveying their audience. And yes, it can be hard to get buy-in and to get people to actually respond to you. You know, I think a lot of people make call outs at the end of their show. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Leave us a review wherever you get your podcast. Send me an email and let, give me your feedback on this episode. Would love to hear what you think and to hear back from nobody. That's definitely a thing. But there are some ways to really get people in the gut and make them respond to you. So think about what makes you respond. When was the last time you responded to a call to action from a podcast that you listened to? And what was it about that call to action that made you respond? So something that I've been playing with is not just, hey, I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Leave me a review wherever you get your podcast. Instead, it's like, hey, Hillary. No, obviously you can't 
say somebody's name, but hey, I would love to hear from you about what you think of this podcast. No, really, it actually helps me very much and I take it all into consideration when you tell me what you think of this show. Last week, I heard from somebody who told me that I talk too fast. I am taking that into consideration and I am going to change things up. I would love to hear from you about what you love about me, what you hate about me. It will help me a lot. Please consider leaving me a review wherever you get your podcast. So yeah. not just doing the standard language that you hear on other podcasts, but really trying something out, really appealing to somebody who might feel the same way as what you just shared. Yes, I talk fast and I know that, but I am working on it. So just really giving somebody two things, giving things for people to think about that they can actually glom onto. Definitely. And also, I think adding on to that, it's also letting them know they're part of the process. That is what I love to do. That That's something I've learned just being in the world of broadcasting for so long is that when you let them know they have a voice within the, the voice of what you're sharing, it, it be, becomes more intimate, which is why I go back to saying it's like the audience of one. No, you can't say, hey, Ariel, thanks for listening, because then I don't know how many Ariels I have out there that are listening, <laughs> holistically speaking, but... The you and the the choice of instead of you guys, yeah. um, hey everyone, you're not making it personal and intimate. So I do tend to go more to the audience of one, but sometimes you really have to even be more specific. And and I'm gonna riff off that idea of like letting people know. You know, I listen, I read every review, I listen, to, I, and I respond to every comment myself on a DM or in, in my social media. I'm taking what you say into account. Tell me so that I can make this better for you and make the listening experience better for you. So yeah, I definitely get that. Great question, Bree. Take a listen to Clever Conversations. All right, Jeffrey has a question and he has a podcast called, I love this because it's a play on words, which makes me giddy inside, Obsessed Podcast. Mm. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey's question is, what are some cliches or common mistakes to avoid when podcasting? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think a lot of ways you can take that. Uh, I think I could take that in a lot of different directions. What I will say is something that I hear or, and see too often is a podcast just with dudes chatting around a table about life. Don't do that or do it, but don't expect much from it. Like have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, if you and your buddies want to get together and make a podcast where you chat about whatever is on your mind, that's great. But then don't expect it to blow up the charts. It could be that 10 years ago, that was a possibility. Um, that you could really just start in your basement and be really funny and, and unique and interesting. And you never know. That could have really done something on the charts. But nowadays, there's hundreds, thousands of people doing that exact same thing. So that is very hard. So avoid that if you really want to make an impact. <laughs> that's, that's, I love that. It reminds me of one of my students when I, when I was teaching broadcasting specifically at St. John's. Uh, I did a project where I had my class create a, a segment of a podcast. Like, just go into the audio booth, let's do a segment. And from that, where it was just two girls talking, it became, now they have a podcast where there's four of them, and it stemmed out of that class. And they are doing so well, because they realize, find a theme, find a topic, find something to hone around what you enjoy. And you're going to have people who are your tribe that you're going to find are going to gravitate to the beluga whales, the coffee, <laughs> the microchondria. I love that you're like using that one now. You better bring <laughs> I don't that know where your... it came from. <laughs> <laughs> like just use it because it's great. But find something because you'll have the people that love history or love horror or whatever, but make it exclusive to that. So it's your voice. There might be other podcasts out there like that, but nobody has your voice. Right. 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 Yeah. Awesome question, Jeffrey. Okay. Carrie has a podcast called Candid with Carrie. Another one I actually have been on. So thanks, Carrie, for dropping a question. Her question is, uh, I, and she's going to pose it as a statement as well. I think that the thing people always want to know and what I want to know, yes, we all want to know, when can I start monetizing? I know uh, this is an area you cover a lot. How many downloads do I need? Should I try to join a podcast network or stay solo? Lots of questions in there, but all extremely valid and common questions. Yeah. Can you touch on each? Yeah, let's do it. Monetizing. When can you start monetizing? Um, truthfully, there's no rule. I think a lot of people think, oh, I have to hit this number of downloads before I monetize. Your podcast probably, hopefully, is appealing to a unique segment of listeners. If your podcast is about mitochondrial DNA or about mitochondria, you that's very specific. So you're probably 
really attractive to people who are into science, really into biology, really into cellular development, all those topics. You could probably pretty early on, maybe 500 to 1,000 downloads per episode, you could probably hit up some sort of like DNA related companies or things like that and potentially monetize. There's a difference between monetization, making some money and making a living. You know, you could monetize pretty early and make $4 an episode. If that's something that's interesting to you, you can definitely try that out. A few services that come to mind, Podgo and um, Podcorn. Um, Those are both places, marketplaces, where you can connect with advertisers and negotiate rates and make a few dollars. Um, If that's something you want to do, that is possible. Is it worth your time? I don't know. Especially thinking about what you are asking your audience to endure in order for you to make $4. If you're, if you're doing 30 second ads at the beginning, middle and end of, of your podcast in exchange for $4, you need to think about, is that worth your time? And is it worth your audience listening to you go on about a product that maybe they're interested in, but maybe not. So thinking about all those things, can you monetize? Yes. Should you think about that? Think about it. (laughs) Um, that's one part of the question. Should we go to another? Yeah, that was actually a really great answer. Think about what is your time worth? Is it worth the $4? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it because, oh, look at me, I have a sponsor. You know, what's the reason for you wanting to put the word sponsorship? Do collaborations instead. That's probably going to build more, right? I mean, I do. Look, folks, I'm doing that with Squadcast. I mean, I I have a, a wonderful relationship with my friends at Squadcast. And honestly, if you're looking to try them out, there's a seven day free trial. I'm going to add that to my podcast page. So you have a link to give them a test out. People like Squadcast and the so many others want their name just mentioned in product and, and companies. You can do a really beautiful collaboration and that's going to be so much more beneficial than the four bucks in your pocket because right. you're going to reach more than four listeners compared to the four dollars. Right. Right. Well, look, if you fall into a space and someone's handing you a big old, you know, million dollar, thousand dollar check, you don't don't turn it down. <laughs> right, there, there's some caveats. Like if you yeah. if you have a very specific audience, like the example that I give often is, I don't know, um, let me try a different one. Say you are very into um, glasses and eye care and things like that. Then you then with 2000 downloads per episode, you can probably adver- advertise for Zenny or for Warby Parker. You never know. Sometimes it means Warby Parker will reach out to you. Sometimes it means Zenny will reach out to you. Sometimes it means you're going to reach out to those people. And how do you do that? Maybe they're maybe they have a campaign going on with um, Podcorn. Maybe they have a campaign going on with Podgo. But more likely, you are going to go to LinkedIn and you're going to search for Warby Parker and you're going to search, click on the Jobs tab and you're going to figure out who's in charge of ads. And then you're going to reach out to them with the perfect pitch and it's going to say, "I have this audience and I get this many downloads per episode and they are largely skewed towards." higher income and they're very willing to buy multiple eyeglasses and therefore I think I would be the perfect advertising partner for you. Let's try out a campaign. So you could always try that out. Um, Again, with 2,000 downloads per episode, you're probably not going to get rich from it, but you are going to make some money. That's a great tip as I wear my glasses. (laughs) That's awesome. All right, let's move on. Talking about downloads, that's the second part of Carrie's questions and I want to be mindful of your time too. She said, how many downloads do you need? That's kind of an open-ended question. I think a lot of us think about our numbers and we're so much more than our numbers, but you have that whole idea of like, oh, 140 downloads means that you're in the top X percent, but what does it even mean? So how many downloads do you need? Do you want to take that one? To, to monetize different number for different categories. Mm. If you are a podcast about society and culture, there are so many podcasts about society and culture, you need a lot of downloads. If you're a podcast about mitochondrial DNA, you don't need as many downloads. <laughs> but there's no rule. So there's no specific somebody out rule. There, someone yeah. out there listening might want to start a podcast on that so they can <laughs> you know grab that. All right. Uh, the other part of that question is, and I love this one, because I've asked this before as well, joining a podcast network. Mm. Is that a good idea or should you stay solo? And how do you even do that? It depends what you want out of a potential network. A lot of networks um, will group together based on topic area uh, or on tone of show or there's a lot of comedy networks. A lot of these networks are more of a vanity metric. It's to say that you're part of a network and then maybe get some cross promos and maybe there's always a feed, maybe written into joining the network, there's a feed drop involved, things like that. Um, Once you get bigger, there are larger networks that you can join that will take care of your ads and lots of different 
iterations of that, different aspects, different rules. So sometimes you'll join a network and they're going to take 30% of the cut of your ads, but in exchange, they're going to facilitate all it, all of it. They're going to send you the copy that you need to read and all of that. They're going to find you the ads. Um, but in exchange, they're taking a good percentage. So a lot of, a lot of things to consider. Percentage of something's better than the percentage of nothing. Right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. If they're going to find that for you, that's great. If they're going to find those ad partners for you. That's lovely. That's a good question. I love that. Carrie, loaded with questions from Candid with Carrie. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I think that covers a lot of the questions. I actually even had some that were in there as well. So all those folks that asked their questions with their podcast, thank you so much. And remember, if you're interested in starting a podcast, if you're thinking about where you want to host or, or where you want to record your podcast, give Squadcast a try. Seven-day free trial. I'm going to add that to a link in my pod, on my podcast page. And also, uh, just listen. If you enjoy this show holistically speaking which I hope you are if you're still listening and you know somebody who might be a podcaster or starting one themselves consider passing it along to one person it can make a difference in that person's life and yes I'm talking to you right now that <laughs> singular person so I want to end this little podcast conversation with you with a game that I play with all of my guests and we have a hot second so I'm going to throw out a word and I want you to just come back with the first word that comes to mind okay miss, I'm nervous this and that no you're not <laughs> Just be an active listener, which you're very I got good this. at. Okay, you got it. Here we go. Listen. Podcast. History. New York. Storytelling. The Moth. Go, okay. Costa Rica. <laughs> uh, vacation. Podcast. Listen. <laughs> this and that. Ariel. <laughs> I love it. Great. I That's love fun. It. I love that is fun, and it just gets things going. Good and game. I love how people think, and that I think that's just like the mental side of me, you know? I tried I to do that. it very fast. I didn't think at all. You did like... do it fast. Look, <laughs> I love that. I mean, you were like on it, which means you're a very active listener, <laughs> you know? So thank you so much, Ariel. This was such a pleasure having you. Again, Ariel is uh, always accessible. I'm going to put all her social media up, all the ways that you can connect with her. I highly recommend it, but trust me, she's so out there with Squadcast and on her own sharing the good news about podcasting for all of you podcasters out there. Uh, you're going to you're not you're going to have a hard time not finding her. That's true. I'm about, a little too available, but it is you, what it is. <laughs> yeah, and if you love coffee, beluga whales and mitochondria, she's your girl as well. That's right. <laughs> Ariel, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I hope that you have an amazing trip to Costa Rica. Real quick, you taking a travel mic with you? Sure am, the Rode NT-USB Mini. Yes, <laughs> so for those of us getting out there on the road again, as this pandemic is allowing us to travel more, consider that possibility. I might actually grab that from you and get a link so that folks can uh, look into that as well. Make sure you connect with Ariel on Instagram and Twitter, and of course, the Earbuds Podcast Collective. All of those links are available on the podcast page. And if you want to give Squadcast a try, I've got a seven-day free trial for you to test it out. I have a feeling that you're going to be hooked once you give it a go. I know I was. That link is also on the podcast page. And if you've enjoyed this episode of Holistically Speaking and you can think of just one other person who may find it valuable, go ahead and pass it along. And consider subscribing and leaving a rating and review wherever your earbuds take you so you never miss a beat. I love knowing that you're part of the conversation and I'd love to hear from you too. So reach out to me on social media on any platform at Hillary Russo or connect me on my website at hillaryrusso.com. Holistically Speaking is edited by Alan Seals with music by Lipbone Redding and of course recorded on Squadcast. Thanks for listening. Keep telling your stories. And as always, be kind to your mind and don't forget to laugh. <laughs>